Ah yes, acoustics, geeks and bass heads, we have another episode of Boom or Bust, the show where we test small scale 3D printed subwoofer enclosures and see which design is the loudest. Now since the start of the series, people have been wondering what a sealed box does in comparison to all these other boxes that we've tested so far. For scientific reasons, naturally sealed boxes tend to be not quite as loud as many other styles of box like bass reflex, transmission line, horn, band pass, all the other box designs that you might choose to run um, but sealed has been the choice of SQ and ease of integration into a system and relatively predictable frequency response and results. So what we have here is by convenience we have this sealed box, the sealed chamber from the Fibonacci 4th. This was the little sort of sealed side of the 4th order if you like that stuck down into the um, horn expanding mouth of the Fibonacci fourth. So it made sense to give this a go. It's kind of a good sort of size. It's the right kind of size that we want to test with anyway. And we can run some parameters on it to, um, you know, so you could model it, make predictions how it would change if it was slightly bigger or slightly smaller. Now I'm not going to run stuffing inside the box. Stuffing it makes the box seem slightly larger as far as the driver is concerned and a slight loss of output. I'm just going to go raw and empty to see how it fares and um, if you wanted to see how adding stuffing changed it you could model it or maybe I could add some stuffing and just post a community post at a later date to tell you how it changed but yeah we're just going to run it just empty at the moment. Now while I'm not expecting this to top the charts by any means it's a tiny small sealed enclosure I think that it's going to be louder than we might otherwise think because this test cabin it kind of simulates an extreme build. It's like an absolutely solid wooden environment, which doesn't really resemble that of a real vehicle cabin because you don't have flexible metal panels and leaks and all the other things that are there in a real vehicle. So the kind of numbers this puts out will be higher than you might expect from a normal single 12 inch subwoofer on 500 watts in the back of a vehicle. Now we've already looked at the impedance sweep graph for this box before in the Fibonacci 4th episode so if you want to see what the graph looks like for this little sealed chamber go check out that video we look at where the air spring is kind of peaking at and resonating at in this box and what the graph looks like but what we didn't do is we didn't shove the RTA in front of it and see what the uh, waveform looks like on our REW and we didn't see what the RTA graphs look like so let's just see how it's like it should be absolutely beautifully clean it's a sealed box but let's have a look now this goes for any enclosure type but particularly prominently with sealed it's super critical that you get a dead tight air seal with absolutely no leaks for the box because the tiniest of air leaks will actually seriously impact the low frequency response of the enclosure so if you're ever doing a seal box you want to make sure that when you push in on the driver you obviously don't hear any hissing or air leaks and you want the driver to feel much much stiffer than it would be free air and if you push it in and hold it there naturally there will be some air escapage just through the materials but the more sealed a box is the harder it will be to push in and then when you let go it will come back out very slowly uh, that does mean that there is some escapage but it's very minimal if you push it in and it comes straight back out and it's very soft then you've got a big air leak somewhere and you need to seal it so how does it sound to me in person because this is a sealed box we're going to be listening to waveforms only coming off the driver we're not kind of loading a quarter wave line or a Helmholtz resonator or port or anything like that we're just listening to the waveforms as they are emitted by the driver and naturally the more the cone moves the more distortions we're going to introduce because as this runs past x max we're going to get non-linear kind of excursion bl so it sounds okay at this volume level there's harmonics now like a fair bit and loads loads and loads of harmonics so that is literally just us pushing the mechanical limits of the driver too far and introducing a bunch of distortion but keeping this within i think the one or 1.5 mil of x max that it says it has sounds good to me now the higher frequency you go the less excursion you have for its relative output so 198 a bit better to the ear still some distortions though at the uh, higher limit of excursion here you can also actually hear the air chafing from behind the driver so the basket on this driver is quite limiting in letting the kind of 
pressures that are generated by the rear of the cone out through the gaps and through the motor and the coil and all, all the air pressures are around that area. So you can actually hear the air chuffing sounds from inside the box that's happening just through the paper of the driver. 270. Sounds way cleaner. with this driver I don't know if it's something specific to this speaker whether it's just doesn't have enough mechanical control or something but at the higher frequencies when you push it hard the driver pushes itself out and oscillates around a new kind of center point look at this and you see it goes back in I've seen large subwoofers do that as well at the higher 40 to 60 hertz range and it tends to be woofers that are relatively soft suspension but have quite a high motor force it's, uh, for some reason seems to do this and I don't have personally an answer for that but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments if you know anything about it. And 360? Yeah, sounds beautifully clean but again doing that thing where it pushes the driver outwards. Oh, there's that lower harmonic. Do you remember what box was it that created the lower harmonic? Oh no, it was that fifth order thing that wasn't really a fifth order where the sub was kind of mounted to the start of the port inside the box. That did this as well. Woo. So yeah, we're clearly overpowering the driver considerably there on power, but also seems just mechanical like control. It just, it just completely loses it up there. So keeping well within X Max, the sine wave looks okay, it's not super beautiful, but literally as soon as we turn it up and start getting any real excursion and approaching mechanical limits, it looks horrendous. It's terrible with this lower frequency here on this driver. And look on the RT, the third harmonic is instantly louder than the second, it overtakes it by quite a lot, and as we approach mechanical limits, the harmonics are almost as loud as the fundamental, it's a very nasty waveform this. Next frequency up at 198 is better. It's still a little pointy, a little bit uneven on the top and bottom of the sine wave. But as we push it harder and get closer to limits, you can see yeah, it, it really does deform and gets very pointy in fact. The 198 is better with the harmonics in pretty much order as we go up, um, but they're still quite prominent. And actually as we approach the limits there, you see the third does just slightly overtake the second. Next one along at 270 is much more rounded. It's not very symmetrical between top and bottom though. Uh, and this is probably due to the driver like leaning out and pushing outwards and not oscillating around a fixed center point really anymore. Our 270 has better separation between the fundamental and the second harmonic and actually harmonics above the second don't really start appearing until we really get to the very limit of this driver here. So it's mostly just the um, second harmonic that's prominent here. And the same kind of thing for the 360 is cleaner again but it's still not perfectly symmetrical either. You've got the fundamental and the second which is not that strong at first comes up quite high as we reach the limit and the third just peaks its head up as we reach the limit. So while sealed is often deemed the sound quality option and the better kind of sounding enclosure, at least for this driver, on the lower frequencies, it really doesn't like it. And it's not really even that happy on the higher stuff. This is far from the cleanest enclosure we have listened to. And the ones that tend to sound best are the ones that load the driver more and prevent it from moving. So our issue here is probably related to a very low X max. Given that the sine waves that the driver can produce itself are okay under a certain excursion limit and as soon as we start pushing further and going for higher output off the driver itself it really messes up and we're only able to get loud with this driver while remaining clean by loading the cone and transferring the energy that the coil can uh, push against into some kind of other displacement um, from a line or a, a quarter wave tube or a port or something rather than relying on the air being displaced by the cone's movement itself. So you know what's coming next, let's show it in the test cabin and let's play some sped up bass testers that I'll then slow down and get in post so you can see what it might sound like if it was scaled up to a full size of this exact driver box combo.
the loudest looking demos, but that's to be expected. It's a small silver box. I don't know about you, but the kicks sounded very accurate and transient. It sounded relatively sort of musical at time six speed, if I can do it that. I mean, I've listened to that demo mix at time six speed enough times that I can kind of pick out differences between these boxes even at that speed now. So let's see what it's doing on the meter then. Interestingly, I don't think this is going to be the worst performer we've had uh, because, for example, the Omni Remid was just a massive enclosure tuned way too high. So it was almost not in an enclosure at all for the most part. So this probably will do better than the Omiramid, but I'm interested to see how it fares up against other ones like the random fifth order thing that wasn't really a fifth. So let's start off with 25 scaled hertz, which is 150 hertz here. See what kind of scores we're putting up. A 135.3, okay. 132.2, so a little bit lower, but um, still like decent pressure in there. 124.9, so there's a huge drop off there between the 33 scaled hertz and the 40 scaled hertz. And that's most likely to do with the uh, cabin resonance here, because the sealed box will actually prefer playing higher frequencies here, and um, especially with this driver. So the difference, the drop in, in output is just because we're not getting any added uh, boost from any of the modes of this cabin. 125.5. So that's actually a little bit louder than it was at the 40. So 60 hertz, a bit louder than 40. Interesting. All right, let's seal off the cabin to the best of my ability. Get a nice seal on the door there and uh, test again, all sealed up. 126.6. The driver is not happy in there. It started buzzing actually. It just picked up a bit of mechanical buzz. I wonder whether that's a tinsel lead or part of the cone or something. A 127. 9. So a little bit louder than at the uh, 33 scale, that's because the quarter wave mode is still actually in effect even with the door closed. 121.6 122, so a little bit louder again. So how does our little sealed boy stack up on the leaderboard then? We get a 129.48 with the door open average and a 124.53 dB average with the door closed. Placing it not in last place is actually above the travesty and the Omiramid, proving that a standard sealed box that's correctly sealed will be louder than maybe some experimental design that just doesn't work. Although saying that, it is much quieter than um, all of the others, including like the Neuter Shooter and the Bass Barrel, which actually performed quite well in comparison, in terms of output at least. And I would say, well, with the sealed, you get the benefit of better SQ, but... In this case, not necessarily. It just doesn't seem to sound that great. There's quite a lot of distortions and stuff. Um, I think it's mostly to do with the driver. And as I said at the start of the series, it is very difficult to find a two inch driver that represents a 12 inch subwoofer when scaled down. It doesn't seem to exist. We need a two inch driver that only really plays up to about 900 Hertz. It's kind of like a mid bass two inch driver. And in reality, two inch drivers are designed to play full range. So they don't really Really give a good representation of a scaled up sub. Now for future seasons I want to really look into getting the driver dialed in and as close to a scaled up subwoofer as possible and I'm actually even in talks with some people who might be able to build me a custom driver which would be fantastic because like I say there doesn't really seem to be anything out there on the market that just plays between like 150 and 900 hertz or something. Everything is either designed to do subwoofer frequencies in a tiny size like the tank band w2 that's too low or it's designed to be full range which has undesirable characteristics due to the ability to play up that high so I hope this has been interesting to see how a seal box stacks up there's some crazy crazy designs to follow and i also want to look at some fourth orders as well and do like a sixth order shootout i've had lots of submissions of similar enclosures to what we've printed so far so i'm going to do some sort of shootout style videos next if you want to sponsor this series in any way by having a logo on the test cabin or a sponsored segment or message in one of these videos get in touch there's an email in the description and i've finally decided on a price for the sponsored stickers so i'll message everyone back who's inquired about that uh, today and if you want to give this a go if you want to design an enclosure for this series there is also a video link in the description which uh, tells you exactly what you need to know all the driver parameters and uh, the tolerances that you need to design a box for this series but yeah until then have a good one i'll see you next time